Hello, welcome to the Elevate Your Wellbeing podcast. It is episode 11 and I'm excited to dive into today's topic. But before I do, make sure you have some natural light on you, especially if you're listening to this in the morning, try to get that light on you as soon as you can. But try to get outside if you can and get that natural light on you. It really makes a difference. And I will be going into that in a little bit more details in an upcoming episode. Also, make sure you have some water and you are drinking the water and I'm going to be diving into that today the importance of drinking water how water really has a huge impact on your well-being and the importance of drinking proper water or having proper hydration of the way so I love that this is following. I don't I don't look at this. I plan ahead a little bit with the topics. I have a long list of ideas of topics I would love to dive into, but I will just say it now. All the details to get in touch with me are in the show notes. You can send me an email. You can contact me through my Facebook page or through Instagram. If there are any topics you would love me to dive into even more or any topics that I haven't touched on yet. Granted, we're only on episode 11. And but do let me know or if you have any feedback or if you have any questions around it, because then that gives me an idea of how I can elaborate even more on these these podcasts. But I do always chuckle because I love the astrology side of things. And it's Friday, the 10th of February that this episode is going live. And in three days time, it will be a last quarter moon in the sign of Scorpio. And Scorpio is a water sign and I'm going to be talking to you today about the topic of water so I find that really really interesting but Scorpio is all about transformation and the power of water can really transform you and there's a quote I can think of um with regards to water it's like the three ways that water can heal you which is um and I can't remember what one of them is, but one of them is tears and one of them is the ocean. I think the other one is sweat, actually. So, yeah, it's three ways that water can heal you, sweat, tears and the ocean. And it is really empowering. Having a good old cry, don't lock up those emotions, really help yourself to release. Or how many times do you cry when you're laughing? And I get that so often that um, it's really refreshing and restoring that you can release those emotions wet it out I do love my sauna blanket and you know movement so you can sweat and the amount of times I've taught yoga over the last 10 years and I've had people that are completely new to yoga and come up to me at the end of a class going wow I didn't expect to sweat during a yoga practice now depending on the type of yoga you do that really can vary but I know I have got students that come to classes that are listening to this so thank you very much hello and I know that you've experienced that and then there is the healing power of the ocean and to live on the south coast is really a privilege because I see water every single day and I love it it's so grounding it's so nourishing if I feel upset or need grounding I always go to the coastline I absolutely love it and that's the power of water. It's not just what you're drinking, it's what you have around you. And it can be really empowering. Uh, and, and a really, really healthy talk. Think about it. We are, depending on who you speak to, depending on the books you read, etc. Some people will say 60, 70, 80%. So let's go between 60 to 80%. You are, we are as beings, 60 to 80% water. The planet you are on is the same. We are predominantly water. The air you breathe, 80% of that comes through the ocean, not the trees. Let me know if that's the first time you've heard that. The 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 water the, the ocean creates helps to create our atmosphere. It's absolutely phenomenal. And trees, yes, do help, but they're they're only like 20 percent part of it so it's it is really fascinating that that kind of percentage meets up again so blue health is a huge component it's something I love to do last year when I was teaching my yoga in the park classes we moved to a location so we could do a little sea swim afterwards and it was really nice it was really really wonderful I even had a student who had not gone in the ocean in the UK and after class she dead kitted up in her in a wet suit and she got in which is really lovely to be part of that journey 
So water has this incredible ability to help soothe your soul. The listening to the water can be really, really healing. Water itself has grounding properties. So you may be aware of the practice of grounding, walking barefoot on the earth, just walking through a forest, laying your hands on grass or placing your hands on a tree. But did you know that doing the same, if you take your shoes off and dip your toes, your feet into the ocean, drinking water is also a form of grounding. So drinking water itself is a form of helping to slow your body, your mind down. It has that nourishing, healing effect on your mind and your body. It helps you to connect with the energy of the earth and help to balance your mind and your body. So when we drink water, we're essentially absorbing the energy and the minerals from the water that are present in that water or from the earth that are present in the water. So this is why it's really important to look at the type of water you're drinking as well, because to really reap the grounding benefits of water, it's important to drink clean, pure water. And sadly, tap water is very contaminated. Yes, we need chemicals to keep the water clean, but we don't really want to be drinking that. So having a filter can be really helpful. Uh, the machine I use, it, it literally saps the energy back to life because if you look at the 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 way water is transported to us it's not natural water moves and flows in spirals but when it's in piping it can't do that so it's really interesting there's a water documentary on Gaia and I, if you use Gaia if you have Gaia if you've got the ability to watch a couple of freebies I know they do sometimes do those offers I really recommend having a look at that but remember you are 60, 70, 80% water, and it makes a huge impact. And I thought I was well hydrated. I can remember a few years ago doing a little challenge about being hydrated. And then when I really started diving into water, and water is my thing, I do love, it's my favorite element, I do love water. But when I started researching it more, I realized I was not drinking enough. And there are people who I now move with and work with and chat with in the health and well-being industry that really encourage and recommend people drinking one gallon a day. Now, that's a lot for me. And I know why, because I've worked with a doctor that's helped with gauging how much water you really should ideally be drinking. Because if you are, say, 70 percent water, then you want to be taking that that intake in. So just to give you a little idea. If you know your weight in pounds or whatever you, you use, kilo stoves, convert it into pounds. I'm going to do 100 pounds because it's easier. And then you're going to take, let's say, for example, those 100 pounds, and then you're going to take that, scratch the pounds out, and then pour that fluid ounces. So you've got 100 fluid ounces because that's your whole body weight. Obviously, you are 60, 70, or 80% water, so you want to then take that amount in fluid ounces and aim to drink that every single day. So if you're going with a hundred pounds and you're saying, okay, so that in its equivalent in fluid ounces is a hundred fluid ounces, 60% would be 60 fluid ounces, 70 would be 70, 80 would be 80. And that really gives you an idea of how much you should be aiming to drink. And then it's being mindful if you're taking electrolytes to make sure you're not washing out you know, vital salts and minerals, and balancing it out that way and that can be something that we can go into uh, on a coaching call if, if hydration is something you really don't do well or at all so this is why whenever you come to a class with me the amount of times and I'm sure I sound like a broken record with it the amount of times I'll say have a pause have a drink have a sip of water and it's really important to keep hydrated because when you feel thirsty you are already dehydrated. So if you're sitting here listening to this thinking, well, I only really think about drinking when I'm dehydrated, like when I'm thirsty, 
then you, you, you might only be one or two percent dehydrated, but that can be enough for you to get headaches and feel groggy and feel lethargic or not have any motivation. So if you notice you have any of those sorts of things going on in your mind and your body, it could just be as simple as being dehydrated. The same way with when we feel anxious, uh, that can be down to dehydration. And I'm not writing anything else off. I'm not um, obviously diagnosing anyone, but it's it's amazing how many people don't drink enough water. And over my 10 plus years of being in the wellness industry, it amazes me how many people say they don't drink water or not enough water at all. And this from someone who I thought I drank plenty of water until I had this uh, awareness of people saying about, you know, go for the gallon a day. And, it, you know, if you've ever done 75 hard, that was the hard bit for me was aiming for the gallon. And that was usually when I would fall off. But because I know the other equation around how much I weigh and how and aiming for the 70%, I'm, I think I'm, I'm like, 50 fluid ounces off of a gallon so it's a lot it's a lot to drink so it's it's interesting from that point of view so be mindful of if you're only drinking when you feel thirsty because you are then dehydrated already the things you can do fill up a glass of water and have it by your bedside table so it's there when you wake up so a few weeks ago uh my instagram mini challenge so if you don't follow me on instagram do come on over I do a weekly mini training and challenge. And one of these a few weeks ago was to drink some water before you have your morning cup of coffee or your morning cup of tea, because tea still has caffeine in it. By drinking some water before you drink any other beverage, you're actually rehydrating yourself. You're getting your circulation going. You're going to be more weight, uh, like motivated. You're going to be more focused. And the penny drop was by drinking your water first, you're helping to refresh your palate and then delaying that coffee by an hour or longer after you've woken up your coffee will actually taste better you'll actually enjoy your coffee more if you feel tired and lethargic in the afternoon go for a glass of water first and then see if you really need the coffee and if you are a big coffee fan, if you're a big coffee lover, hi, me too. I'm not telling you to ditch coffee. I don't hate coffee. But this was a big game changer because I know how my body gets affected by too much coffee. I then don't sleep very well. And then it's a vicious cycle. But by having that glass of water already filled up, it's one of, one of the things I do in my evening routine. Fill up a glass of water, put it by my bed, and it's there ready for me in the morning. And I sip that throughout the morning. So I have about, I have a, I'm currently looking at my mind. I've just filled it up for the third time today. I have a 32 fluid ounce glass and I drink three to four of those every day. I'm just laughing in case you're like, well, how much does that make you weigh? <laughs> um, but I would drink my, that first one within, like I wake up at seven, quarter to seven, and that's then done by around 10, 10, 30. Sometimes sooner, sometimes later, depending on my, my my day and then the other thing you can do is make sure you know if you can I know people that will do this they love doing this they will fill up multiple glasses and put them down everywhere so you'll have a glass like I have right now in front of me on my desk there'll be a glass by the side of the bed there'll be a glass uh on the coffee table when you go into the living room a glass in the kitchen wherever it is and you're like okay that's my glass I'll take a sip because it's being it there as a reminder so if you have gone to work and you've taken a bottle of water make sure you take it out and put it on your desk because otherwise you're going to get home, you're going to empty your bag and be like, oh, I forgot I had that bottle of water there. Who here that's listening to this resonates with that? How many times have you done that? So find ways that you can do this easily. Create it as a habit. And yes, okay, I have a 32 ounce glass of water with me now, but it didn't always start off at that. When I looked at the glasses I had, I had a very typical like tumbler glass, which is about eight fluid ounces. And I just started making sure I was drinking that. And I was really, really um, consistent with going, okay, I'm going to have a sip of water on that note. So I'm going to do now. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Setting timers can really help. Having reminders. I really love the water bottles that have the times, but I kind of giggle because the water bottle really isn't big enough to, to use for the whole day, but where it has like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., etc. But... 
really it should just be drink me by midday and drink me by by this time and then that water bottle should hopefully be empty and I then had that in my mind I I started with smaller glasses I had reminders when I then went up to a 16 fluid ounce ounce glass um I would start looking at say time and be like right okay by 10 o'clock I want to have drunk that amount by 2 p.m I want to have drunk that amount by 5 p.m and obviously you want to drink more in the earlier in the day because otherwise you will be going to the toilet like you'll have to wake up in the night and I've done that if I'm next to it because I haven't drunk enough during the day and I've got close to bedtime and it really wasn't worth it because you just wake up in the evening and those of you that are like oh if I drink that amount of water I'm just going to keep going to the bathroom you will to start with because your body isn't flushing out everything it needs to flush out so it will you know it's like getting the systems going you will find that you'll do that more often to begin with but as your body gets used to it, as your body acclimatizes and go, oh, actually, I don't need to go to the bathroom as much because this is actually how much water I need to retain, how much fluid I need to retain. And it makes a huge difference. If you do suffer with headaches, which I used to a lot, and I thought I was drinking enough water, I wasn't. If you have any issues with your cycle, if it feels really heavy, if you feel very tired and lethargic throughout the day, or especially around your cycle, uh, it can have a really big impact on that. And that has been the big game changer of making sure I'm hydrated. Um, I used to have really pa uh, painful, really uncomfortable, really heavy uh, period cycles. And now I literally breathe through them. And it's like, it, it baffles me that we're told, oh, it's normal, but it, it shouldn't be. But it's because we're overlooking a huge component of our health and well-being. And it's it's something that I do feel very, very passionate about and, and really do like to share about water because that alongside anything else that you're doing, your nutrition, um, any movements you're doing, anything else that you're doing with um, you know, with your GP or or whatever, you know, I'm not poo-pooing anything of that, but it's just being mindful of what else is there because we can try all these things and they're not working and then realizing, oh, we're 70% water, and that can take a big equation of what we're missing with it when it comes to our health when it comes to our mental health and our physical health so i'm going to leave you there if you have got any questions do reach out like i said everything is in the show notes with how you can get in touch with me through instagram facebook or send me an email if you would like to learn more about water and as i already said i do have a particular uh water filter ionizer if you'd like to know more let me know get in touch and i can send you a free pdf ebook about it and grab your journals i do like to do a little journaling prompt with you And just reflect on your relationship with drinking water. And just really be aware of just allowing, even free flowing on the page. Do you drink enough water? What is your relationship like with water? How does water feel for you when you drink it? When you're near the ocean, for example, does that feel calming for you? I know some people don't like the water as much, but it can, for the majority of people, have that effect. So maybe your element is different. As I've said during this episode, the water element really much, very much is my, my favourite element. And just reflect on that. And do let me know if you enjoy this episode, share that you're listening to it and tag me. Uh, if you're listening and sharing on Instagram at I am Rachel underscore UK. And please do share it if you are really enjoying this, this podcast. I really do enjoy creating these episodes for you. But please do share them with friends, family, colleagues, anyone that you feel, you know, if, if this episode or a previous episode or an upcoming episode really resonates with you, but you you think of someone else and think, oh, they might find this interesting or they might find this helpful, please do share it. 
it means a lot. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will be back next week. Take care.